out some simple ones to start off with. So we're here for language review. Just a reminder to people that only those people on the report can comment, ask questions, or have any, any input on the language review. So why don't you begin, Lindsay? Excellent, thank you. Okay, we're gonna start with LD 2016. This is an act to implement the crisis response services recommendations identified pursuant to Resolve 2021, Chapter 29. I anticipate we'll probably be able to move through some of these pretty quickly. Is this a unanimous committee report? That is correct. Okay. okay any questions, comments on this uh, amendment? Everybody good with it? I'll just point out the only changes were the inclusion of two additional individuals um, as part of the working group. Yep, good. Sounds like we're all set. So that. Mike? Usually I'm turning everybody else's off. Okay, next up is LD1913, an act to review strategies for improving utility rate affordability and to provide utility relief. And we're looking at the majority report. The minority report was ought not to pass. Okay, reminder who's on the majority report. It's Barry. Um, Carlo. Carlo, Cuddy. Grignan. Grignan, thank you. Um, uh, Nicole um, Kessler. It's like everybody but me, pretty much. Um, I'm on out to pass with Representative Foster. Yeah, so one on the minority, and I did not vote. So, Representative Foster, you're muzzled. Thank you. So, the changes here just want to point out a new title. And then on the second page, um, the composition of the council. Hey, is everybody on the majority fine? Okay, sounds like we're done with that one, Lindsay. Okay. Next up should be LD 2017, resolve regard, regarding monitoring of and reporting on energy use data standards and online energy data platforms. So I'll note here the only change was basically just to clarify um, for the PUC in issuing a request for information to, in, this would be a request to transmission and distribution utilities and natural gas utilities. Okay, hey, this is a unanimous report. Any comments, changes? Three. That's three. Okay, next up is LD 1079. No. Resolve to review the effects of the deregulation of main utilities. This is the minority report. So this is Senator Stewart, Representative Carlo, Representative Foster, and Representative Wadsworth. Majority report was ought not to pass. So any on the uh, minority report, any ch changes from you guys? Representative Foster, you're good. Representative Wadsworth, Representative Carlo, you're good. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Sounds like it's good. It's another one done. Okay. Next up is LD 1634. This is an act to create the main generation authority. 
Uh, we were looking at the minority report. Majority report was ought not to pass. Uh, minority report was Representative Ferry, um, Representative Cuddy, Representative Grahowski, Representative Kessler, Representative Sachs, and Representative Ziegler. And this is a longer one, so. <laughs> Go ahead. Nicole, since this was your bill, do you have any um, concerns about the language? Well, just to share. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I did work with our analysts to uh, incorporate all the edits that have been discussed through multiple work sessions and did also share the language I had yesterday uh, with all the members on this report. So hopefully they've had a chance to look through it if they wanted to, but I felt good about it. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Representative Ziegler, you're good on it? I was waiting. I've been waiting. <laughs> Nope, you have to put something in your mouth now. <laughs> I will just put the word yes, I'm okay in my mouth Good. at this point. Representative Cuddy and Representative Barry. Looks good. Okay. And Representative uh, Carlo. Oops, I'm sorry, you're on the other side. Representative Sachs. I approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Looks like we're all good on that one. Okay, next up is LD 2015, an act to update the comprehensive state energy plan to achieve the state energy vision. So this is the ought to pass as amended report. This is Representative Ferry, Representative Grahowski, Representative Kessler, Representative Sachs, Senator Vitelli, and Representative Ziegler. The other report was ought not to pass. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, could I ask our clerk to Jason to give make sure the governor's energy office has a copy also? Sure. Thank you. And I just want to make sure that um, they can confirm that the changes they had asked for are in here. Probably need a minute to actually read it. <laughs> Mr. Chair, could I ask that Lindsay, due to the, the quality of the copy we have, just go through the changes that were made in the amendment, if you could, please? Certainly. Through no fault of anyone, however, I just wanted to double check. Thank you. Bear with me one moment. Okay, so the changes here, this had been, um, this was based on language provided by the Governor's Energy Office and just reformatted a little bit. Um, but what we have is, um, changes to include that in putting together the state energy plan, um, the inclusion of consultation with relevant state and quasi-independent state entities, um, language regarding who the plan would be submitted to. So this will go to the governor, the main climate council, and the joint the EUT committee. Turning to page two. Um, the additional reporting requirement that will start in 2025, identifying who that will go to, the governor. Climate Council and the Joint Standing Committee of the Legislature, UT. And that is it. You all good on this? Great. So, Representative like Barry, you're all good? I'm seeing nodding from the Governor's Energy Office. I think everything was included. Great. Thank you. Yes, I am. Okay, that one's done. Okay, and next up is LD1894, an act to support municipal broadband infrastructure through incentives and competition. This is one that actually we had looked at on Tuesday and an email went out and um, 
the sponsor and Senator Vitelli isn't here, um, but she had some, she looked at this and said that maybe she wanted to revisit this language. Um, and so there was the inclusion of an additional sentence. So bring that to the committee. And so this okay. is the majority report ought to pass as amended. This is Representative Barry, Senator Lawrence, uh, Representative Carlo, uh, Representative Cuddy, Representative Krahowski, Representative Kessler, Representative Sachs, Senator Vitelli, and Representative Ziegler. The minority report was ought not to pass. So as you may recall at the work session, this relates to the registration requirement uh, for consumer owned public utilities wanting to expand into broadband. Um, so there's a registration requirement. There was an attestation requirement also, and that was stricken um, as a result of the work session. Um, however, I believe the sponsor's intent was to have some reference to section 713. Any questions, comments? Okay, sounds like this one is good. Okay, next up is LD1202. This is an act to establish the wood-fired combined heat and power program. Um, this is also one that we had taken a look at on Tuesday and um, the committee had some thoughts. So instead of just sending this out by email, I figured we could just present this here. So once everyone has a copy, I can just walk through what the changes are. Is this a unanimous committee amendment? Yes. Okay. So in terms of changes, if we start on, it's now the first page, looking at the definition of wood fuel. Um, one of the things that the committee brought up on Tuesday was the idea of eliminating and I had raised this as a question um, when we're looking at wood fuel biomass derived from down trees from extreme weather events. Um, question was whether the word extreme needed to be there. So um, the committee seemed on board with striking that. Um, the other element I'd questioned was non-hazardous landscape material. Um, but I think the it seemed like the committee wanted to leave that in there. And then going down to program eligibility criteria. This was a change that had been made after the work session, or as a result of the work session, I should say. Um, so to, to be eligible to participate, participate in the program, a combined heat and power project must be have an in-service date after November 1st, 2022, um, be highly efficient as determined by the commission, and not be a participant in net energy billing. And then we also had a change to the language in the paragraph below regarding the PUC's obligations. Um, so the commission shall inform the applicant within 30 days of receipt of an application if the application is complete, and they will determine whether a project qualifies for participation as soon as practical and respond in writing. Oh, and then I apologize, one other change on page four at the very top, just for consistency, adding the words forest products. So it's forest products manufacturing residuals to be consistent with the definition. Any questions? Everybody good? Great. Another one bites the dust. Okay, so at this point, we have gotten through all the easy stuff. Did okay. we want to move on to some of the harder yep. stuff? Okay. And if you could save Senator Vitelli's bill, uh, or Senator Brenner's bill till later, till Senator uh, Vitelli is here, that would be great. Okay, so this is LD 1026, an act to update regulation, the regulation of public utility monopolies. Um, so we have three amendments to look at. They're all a little different, hence the variety of colors. So hope you appreciate the efforts that way. We do. Thank you. We may be jealous about who gets me which color, but um, so this is Melanie and Scott Cuddy's is the orange. 
So I think we may want to hold off until everybody has all three because yep. um, they do kind of, there's some overlap. So it may yep. make sense to start with um, the light yellow one. And the fuchsia, if that's fuchsia, magenta, maybe, uh, is Representative Berry, Representative Kessler, Representative Grohowski, and Representative Ziegler. And then the yellow one, which we'll be starting with, is myself, Representative Foster, uh, Senator Vitelli, um, Senator Stewart, and Representative Grignan. Yes, so why don't we start with that one? Um, so this, I'll preface this by saying this, this was a concept draft and folks took bits and pieces. So it's, um, please read it carefully to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, so we'll start out with um, Senator Lawrence, Representative Foster, Representative Grignan, Senator Vitelli, and Senator Stewart. Um, so this amendment simply makes changes to the um, to Title 35A to correct a, a can clean up, let's say, some of the language. Basically, we have competitive electricity providers and competitive service providers. Um, Representative Barry's amendment to his concept draft had wanted those made consistent, so it would be competitive electricity providers. And this language simply directs the revisor's office to make that change. Great. Uh, I don't have any question on that. Representative Foster. Okay. Right. So let's go on. Which one should we do next? Let's look next at the pink one. Okay. So this will be the big one. So this is Representative Barry, Representative Kessler, Representative Grohowski, and Representative Ziegler. Correct. So we start out with the language about updating competitive electricity, competitive service providers. Then we get to section three. Um, so this relates to um, furnishing services in an area where a public utility is already providing services and establishes how it's determined for a municipal power district or cooperative. So that's section three and four, five, six, seven and eight. Do you have a question about the language Representative Barry? Go ahead. Thank you, um, Ms. Laxon. I um, I'm responsible for the the original title of this bill, but I think you know it, um, certainly for you know I'll just speak to, to the amendment that I'm on. Um, actually, we're on, we're on the fuchsia, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think the title might be more accurate if we were to reflect it differently here. Um, since it goes, it's not really just about regulating the utility itself, but also there's this DER component. So um, I would suggest if, if members of the Fuchsia amendments are not opposed that it be entitled instead an act to reduce energy costs and provide for utility customer choice. And was that part of your motion in the committee? <clears throat> it was not. And I guess I'm looking to our analysts because I, I think I certainly need the, the title to reflect the content. So um, I would be happy to, if it's cleaner to move that we reconsider just to make that possible, but I'm not sure it's possible, it's necessary. Lindsay? I honestly don't know if a reconsideration would be necessary to update the title. Yeah. 
because um, I think it's possible the revisor's office might have some questions when this goes in. Um, I'm fine with that if Representative Grahowski is in agreement. You have to pay attention, you know. I'm kidding. Yes. Yeah, doing a change in the title and the language review. If you're fine with that. Okay. So you're fine with that. Okay. Good. Go ahead. Representative Barry, because you're on the report. And you and Seth are the only two on here on the report. I'm sorry, and Paige, but he didn't have anything in his mouth, so I couldn't call on him. Paige, do you want to? Are you? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So next up, um, yep. continuing with the pink, we're not done yet. Um, so looking at section nine. Um, this relates to, so these were, um, this is language that came initially from the governor's energy office related to net energy billing. Um, so in section nine, we have just a substitution of terminology. So instead of reach commercial operations, switching to mechanical completion and including a definition. And then the addition of a good cause exemption um, for resources, basically the, in connection if there's a delay um, and it's due to the failure of timely completion of transmission and distribution upgrades and directs the PUC to grant the exemption. Everybody fine? Folks have questions? Okay, continuing. Um, section 10, so this relates to net energy, net energy billing for um, commercial or industrial consumers. And so these are the changes to the tariff rates. And I ask you to look at it very carefully um, because the section, I restructured it um, because of the, the new language. So basically this is establishing a new tariff rate under this is paragraph A1 and establishing what types of programs qualify. You guys all set? Oh, Representative Grahowski. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was trying to recall, I know we had discussed the sworn affidavit. Uh, I thought that we had maybe removed that, but I don't have my notes with me on this bill. Do you remember Representative Barry? Yes. The motion that i made and and um the way i understood uh stakeholders to desire that um as well is to is that a sworn affidavit with accompanying documentation should be sufficient and um you know the commencement of physical work is enough but projects can be lumpy and having um Having you know additional work done around that is is probably unnecessary and duplicative. I think I think that this language accurately reflects my motion. Are the three of you fine? Anything else on the future? Uh, there's also language under paragraph eight regarding a one-time election for an entity to receive um, the rate described in A1. Everybody fine with that? Okay. Excellent. That one's done. Okay. Now the orange. Oops. Yep. That amendment's done. I shouldn't say we're done with all the amendments. We're doing the orange now. Okay, so this is Representative Sachs and Representative Cuddy. Cuddy. Um, so this incorporates, as we've seen, the changes to the terminology in sections one and two. And then this is, these are the changes to the tariff rate program. And so Representative Sachs, I wanna make sure because, right, um, that I captured this correctly. So this, you know, I had subsequent conversations um, with Representative Barry on his amendment just trying to clarify sort of what he was looking for. So I wanna make sure that this is consistent with what your intent was also. It is. 
Um, the only thing that I, so thank you for adding the consumer price index. The only thing that is not in my amendment that I had stated um, I would like to see is if you look at the fuchsia under section 11, the text around the greater than two megawatts oh, okay. and not more than five should have been on my report as well. Understood. Please, if that's okay with Representative no, Cuddy, that's... that was, uh, I think, pretty explicitly stated as the intent to include that as an amendment, part of my amendment. So Lindsay will add that in. Can you guys review it by email and just so yeah. we can get Yeah, it, it should be just lift the exact okay. language that's in fuchsia and move it to- Okay, great. Whatever puce color. What that one's color done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do we keep want to- Keep going, try? yep, keep going. I think you guys are 215, is that right? Ish? So do you suggest we do the yellow first? Yes. Um, what I will say up front, though, this is one, you have two out of three reports. There's one, there's another report, which is not quite ready yet. So do you want to hold off till you get it ready and we can do it tomorrow or it is it's up to the committee. Well, why don't we start get these two done. Excellent. Okay. okay. So this is Nathan, Trey, Chad, Scott, and Nathan. Okay, so this was one of the reports. Steve. Sorry. Um, so this relates to the alternative compliance payment um, established for class two resources. And so this amendment strikes the $50 cap um, that was applicable uh, for 3A, B, and C. Um, and directs the PUC to establish uh, the payment rates by rule um, or to, to establish them, excuse me, and directs them to balance the cost to rate payers in the state with the interest of renewable resource investors in receiving a reasonable rate on their return. You guys all set? Scott, are you fine? Okay, thank you. Kidding. You're fine? Okay, it's all good. I was talking to Scott Foster. Okay, now we have the report with uh, Senator Vitelli, myself, Representative Ziegler, Representative Sachs, and Representative Cuddy. All right, so this is the orange report. Um, so the changes here. Um, we've got the alternative compliance payment for class two recs. There's a cap of $10. And if we go down to on page four out of six, um, looking at the um, category for weight of 30% must be given uh, two benefits to the economy, which we may include but not limited to, and just striking the first two criteria. Sorry, you're on page four? Correct, top of page four. Very oh, top. Okay. Scott, look good. Eloise, how does this look to you? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. All right. Melanie, fine. Mm -hmm. Eloise, fine. Paige, wicked good. Okay, sounds like that one's done. All right. We have time for one more. We can keep going till I hear bells. Okay. <laughs> You've been sticking you your finger in the light socket too many times, Scott. Thanks. 
This is LD 634. Um, and actually, I should have we should have done this probably right with 1026 because you'll see some overlap. Uh, this is an act to cap the value of contracts for renewable resources and distributed generation resources. Um, this is the majority report. Minority report was ought not to pass. Um, so this is Senator Lawrence, Representative Carlo, Representative Huddy, Representative Foster, Representative Grignan, Senator Stewart, Senator Vitelli, Representative Wadsworth, and Representative Ziegler. So this is basically the same, very similar language. Um, I did want to flag, however, that the governor's energy office um, had submitted some language. This was after, but this may have been part of the, I don't know if the intent at the time that the majority voted was to include something like this. So I just wanted to flag it for your attention. And that's the, the affidavit language. That's, um, this is in the note on page two in the middle of the yep. paragraph. So do you know, um, Steve? Uh, thank you, Senator. I would, uh, I guess I'll defer to my lead here, but without Senator Stewart here, and uh, I, I think this is something we would like to discuss further amongst ourselves. Yeah. I think, yeah, we're going to need to have Senator Stewart here, and he hasn't been able to join via Zoom. So um, if we could set this aside, and maybe when we get a hold of him, if we need be, we're going to do a Zoom tomorrow morning from nine to one. So maybe we can get him on on that and go over this. Okay. Okay, and all that's left is 1959. This is the big one. Did you want to take Are you this all up? Set? Senator Vitelli, you're on deck. Let's do that. Okay. Seriously, that's all we had left. I thought you had 26. Well, we accomplished something the other day and oh, okay. some things went out by email. <clears throat> the package. Pardon my amazement. Do you want to take them? <laughs> nope. You've got one on, yeah. <clears throat> In what order do you suggest we do this, Lindsay? Uh, let's start with, actually, <clears throat> let's start with blue, then we'll go to green, then we'll go to pink. So what is blue? Is that the Vitelli Amendment, the Berry Amendment, or the... It is the Stewart Amendment. Stewart Amendment. Uh, Stewart? Yeah, I believe, yes. Are you guys comfortable going ahead without Trey being here? Yeah, you need him here. No. Right. Except for Trey's other amendment. But if we could do it tomorrow, we could. I want to get the language reviews done first. We were just talking briefly for the committee's information. We got another bill referred to us, obviously. And my preference is to get these language reviews done before we have the public hearing. But if things are going well and we just have one or two things to review tomorrow morning, we could do the public hearing tomorrow morning and get it out of the way. So I guess I was asking, are you guys fine reviewing the blue now without Trey being here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so why don't you go ahead with um, Representative Foster, um, Representative Wadsworth, and go over that amendment. Okay, what I'm going to do, so starting out, this the foundation for this amendment, um, and for each of them, was the amendment that was offered by the sponsor before the work session. So that was sort of the framework that we started from. Um, so hopefully I captured everything here. Um, so looking at this ought to pass as amended, um, in terms of the service standards and report card, um, the commission is directed to consider cost impacts and benefits to rate payers when establishing each service standard and metric. So I'm just highlighting the deviations from the amendment that went out. Uh, then we go down to section two. Um, and so this is six at the bottom of page two, including that um, when doing a comparison of utility expenditures, it's to comparable investor owned transmission distribution utilities. 
Um, and then also um, establishing that a comparable investor owned transmission distribution utility is one that provides electricity delivery in a service territory in a Northern climate that is primarily wooded and includes urban and rural areas. Um, then we get to the sort of the uh, protections for employees when they're testifying. Um, so we've got some changes just to clean up, again, the terminology, competitive service provider to competitive electricity provider getting covered here. And then if we go to page four of nine in the exceptions. So the protections um, established here do not apply when the information would be found to be false or consists of information about critical energy infrastructure, personally identifiable information, customer specific information or other information that is confidential by law. More cleanup with language on page five. Okay, then we get to section four. This is page six of nine. This relates to the administrative penalties specific to um, violations of section 301, subsection 1A. Um, so the commission shall impose a penalty um, instead of looking at failures over two consecutive calendar quarters. It's for any rolling 18 month consecutive period. And in determining the amount of the administrative penalty, in addition to the factors that they, the PUC would otherwise consider when they are assessing administrative penalties, they shall take into account the severity of the non-compliance, the harm, if any, to ratepayers, and whether such non-compliance was the result of events or actions within the utilities control and such other factors as the commission determines appropriate. In section five, we get into the divestiture provisions. Um, clarification that this is just an investor owned transmission and distribution utility. Um, in the commission's determination, um, when they're looking at a proposal from a qualified buyer, um, is it for a fair and reasonable purchase price, ensuring that the owners of the transmission distribution utility receive just compensation for the sale of the utility or its assets, and then establishing superior court review. And this would be of the PUC's determination of just compensation. And move on to section six, the climate change protection plan, um, changing the date. To, so this is December 31st, 2023, an investor owned transmission distribution utility shall submit the plan. As part of the plan, the utility shall include estimates of the costs associated with implementing um, the identified actions. And then a transmission and distributions prudently incurred costs in taking any action ordered by the commission in accordance with this section are just and reasonable costs and may and must be reflected in their rates. Um, and then section eight. So this is an element which is unique to this report, um, repealing the 100 megawatt cap for renewable capacity resources and renewable resources under 3210. What was that question? We're on the blue. Nathan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Where'd you grab the language for uh, removal of the 100 megawatt cap? Was that some, from some previous legislation? Um, this is existing law that we're just striking. That cap is in okay, current statute. Yep. And so now it would be, it, it would be taken away. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions on the blue? You're not on the blue, Representative Barry. Uh, question about procedure. Yep, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I just want, I, I don't believe all the folks in the room have copies. I'm wondering if our clerk is able to send out PDFs to interested parties. Um, we could certainly send something out after we can get that out. I can send all of these out to the interested parties list once we've wrapped up here, if that works. I think um, that would be or helpful. if any interested party wants my copy or anybody else who's not on the report, they're welcome to take it. Want one? It works its way that way, yeah. Anybody else wants to share who's not on that report? 
Okay, um, from the blue people. Any changes? Not that I can see. Good, you're all set. Now are we on to the pink or the lime green or whatever this is. Uh, let's go on to lime green. Okay. So that's Senator Vitelli, myself, Representative Cuddy, Representative Sachs, and Representative Ziegler. Yes, so this hopefully incorporates all of the items that we discussed um, at the work session. So again, starting out with um, the sponsor's amendment that was presented <clears throat> and then adding in the following elements. Um, so under 1A, paragraph B, um, requiring the commission to consider costs, impacts, and benefits to rate payers when establishing each standard. Oh, and excuse me, I should have highlighted this paragraph H, um, including once every three years, the commission may audit the data reported by the utility for each standard. Then we get into the audit section. The comparison is very difficult to see the highlighting on here. Um, at the top of page three, uh, for purposes of this subsection, a comparable investor owned transmission distribution utility is one that provides electricity delivery um, in service territory in a Northern climate that's primarily wooded with urban and rural features. So this is that same language that we saw in the other report. And in section three, we've got cleanup language for competitive service provider, competitive electricity provider. Ah, we get down to, this is on page five of 10. This is seven, um, a public utility, Competitive electricity provider affiliated interest may not enter into an agreement preventing employees from exercising their rights to testify. So this is not limited to collective bargaining. And actually, as I look at this, that header will have to be changed. Um, and it can't, it's not looking at that sole purpose. So just for clarification, you're going to change that header. What, what are you going to change it to? I think this would be agreements. Okay. If that's okay. Senator Vitelli, is that fine? Um, number seven. Yeah, right. <clears throat> just the heading. Okay. There we go. So the heading is going to be what? We can just call it agreements. Agreements. Like that. Yes, and you caught that additional technical change. Public utility, electric, um, competitive electricity provider. Okay. Yep. Doesn't look like anything on page six. Let's just see. Down at the bottom of page five, the notice of rights required is another um, edit that should be competitive electricity provider. Instead of oh. Service. On it's number like 10. Thank you. Yes, on number 10. Yeah, but that's just that correction of the language yep, yep, to get it's consistency. Just, thank yep. you. Consistency. Yep. Hobgoblin of small mice. I did nothing on six, uh, but nope. seven has a few. Okay, we get to seven. Okay, so this is when looking that we're in divestiture. Um, so the commission will be looking at. This is, is D new? Yes. If the proposal will benefit ratepayers as determined in accordance with section okay. 708, subsection two, C2. Okay. Then the superior court review language is also, that's on page seven of 10. Um, Where is that? Uh, this is the middle of the page on page seven. Is that all that new? Correct. This you okay. also saw in the report we just looked at. Okay. Uh, then we get to the climate change protection plan. And on the top of page eight, prudently incurred cost language appears here too. So any action ordered by the commission in accordance with the section, these are just and reasonable operating costs and must be reflected in the utilities rates. All right, so I'm gonna stop there for a moment to see if anyone has any 
anyone on this report has questions or concerns so far because that looks like it's that's it for the report right on all the well late, and late changes 3147 um it's reformatted in such a way where i didn't put highlights on it oh, okay. for any of these reports just because it, okay. it would have been overwhelming um, so does anybody on this report have questions on anything up to the section entitled 3147 just That's wondering if we could strike the last few words in the third line at the top of page eight so that it stops reasonable operating costs for rate making purposes period Um, if that's if that is the intent, if that was the intent, um, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Scott Page, Melanie, yep, all fine. fine. Okay. Okay, so we get to integrated grid planning. Yep. Um, I'm just going to walk you through kind of what this does. Um, and you'll have to bear with me a little bit. All right, so we've created some definitions for the purposes of this section. So we've got a covered utility, which means a large investor owned transmission distribution utility citing to existing statute. So this is more than 50,000 customers. So instead of just having it in there, we're tying it to existing law. Environmental justice, this was in the original amendment as proposed, but we've just moved it to a definition section. We've established a definition of grid plan. Um, so this is where we're incorporating that's improving system reliability and resiliency, enabling cost-effective achievement of greenhouse gas reduction obligations and climate policies pursuant to statute. Um, we've also added a definition of hosting capacity. All right, so we've got the definition section. So then we get into the plan development um, because we had multiple sort of components coming together here. So the commission shall develop and implement grid plans for covered utilities. So again, we go back to the definition section. In order to transition to a clean, affordable and reliable electric grid in a cost-effective manner, the commission may contract with an independent organization to assist in development of a grid plan and shall hold technical conferences or stakeholder workshops before the grid plan is developed to define requirements and inform inputs, assumptions, methodologies, and tools that will assist the commission in determining what actions, if any, it will direct the covered utility to take. Covered utilities shall provide the information requested by the commission in order to develop the plan. There's just one small yep. typo in the second sentence. In order to transition, there's an extra the. Oh, okay. Yeah, some of the technical stuff, the revisor's office okay. is fabulous and they will they will take care of my typos. My father was an English professor. So okay. <laughs> let's just finish up on this. So just for everybody's information, I'm hearing bells. Oh. So my suggestion is we finish up on this green, lime green one and see if everybody's fine. And then if you guys want to do yours tomorrow, the, the four of you, um, we can do it tomorrow morning. Is that it other than we have Senator Stewart's bill to do and there's one year still drafting. So we're only gonna have three language reviews tomorrow? I believe so. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to reserve the right to revise that number based on clearing yeah. off my desk, but I, yeah. I think that's it. So how would people feel about doing the three language reviews first and then having the hearing on Representative Martin's bill at 10 and seeing if we can get that done and vote it out. And then we may be really done. Does that all sound good? Okay. Uh, Representative Barry. Thank you. That, that's probably fine. I, I'd also be happy to do the language reviews afterwards. Um, you know, it strikes me in looking at these that there may be some opportunities to come together around some things. And I think there's, you know, there's always a possibility of a larger discussion. Um, if people are open to that, I certainly would be, um, which might be an argument for putting the language review afterwards, just in case we want to have that. Um, my too. preference would be getting the language review done. These are voted on. If we're going to deal with it, it'll be on the floor. That sounds good. Um, okay. And we can always come back afterwards. So okay. why don't we finish up, Lindsay, on 3147? Okay. So we've covered plan development, then we get to plan submission. Um, so no later than December 15th, 2023. And every three years thereafter, the commission shall seek public comment on grid plans developed in accordance with the section. 
The commission shall open an adjudicatory proceeding or proceedings on each covered utilities grid plan and shall ensure to the greatest extent practicable that any information related to the grid plan is provided in a forum accessible to interested parties and all relevant data and distribution planning modeling tools are available to stakeholders subject to commercial non-disclosure, confidential energy infrastructure, codes of conduct and other commercial commission federal energy regulatory requirements. So the commission shall require each covered utility to implement the grid plan. For the initial integrated grid plan, the commission may provide a phased schedule to allow the covered utility to meet requisite compliance components incrementally. The commission shall develop reporting metrics, establish baselines and track progress in achieving the grid plan. Great. If anybody's not on the green report and they wanna head out, I won't be offended, so. Well, Mr. Chair, I, the reason I was just chatting a little bit with Senator Vitelli and this 3147, Lindsay done an amazing job trying to integrate, but it's quite substantial. And I would like the opportunity since I'm on the report and just getting this language okay. to review it just overnight okay. and, and discuss the green tomorrow if we yep. could. I'm happy to That's go through fine. the changes today, but just in the interest of full. So we're fine really with everything up to 3147 on the green, okay. and then we'll do that first thing tomorrow. Um, and you'll have a chance to look at it and, but we'll have to make sure Paige has breakfast. So he has something in his mouth tomorrow morning. Um, so. Oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then let's, um, let's bring it to conclusion today. Uh, we'll pick up with the lime green, and then we'll go on to the pink, and then we'll do the mystery one that's still being developed and Senator Stewart's. That's and good. then we'll have our hearing at 10. And can you get the hearing advertised? Is that? No, we can. I wasn't sure when you wanted to. Why don't you put it on, Mike? So I wasn't so, sure when you wanted to start. Yeah, if we could do, Jason, if we could do the hearing at 10 tomorrow on Representative Martin's bill. And whatever notices we have to send out, we can get that done so we can hear it at 10. Yep. Okay. You do at nine. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just wanted to also um, clarify. So we'll be sending out anything that we reviewed and approved can be sent out to IPs um, by our clerk. I think the things that haven't been reviewed probably shouldn't be. Yeah, um, that's fine. And just quickly, um, Lindsay, and, and for those of you that received the pink already, um, I, I haven't reviewed everything, but the planning part should be the same uh, for the pink as it is for the green. My suggestion is why don't you go over that with Lindsay? And this is just to make amendment. sure yeah. because it got given out, yeah. Mr. Chair, that, okay. that there isn't any uh, major confusion okay. invoked. Um, and I think I think that was my fault, not Lindsay's, but um, that's one very important uh, clarification. We can do others tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, so we're done for today. Also, we'll see you all bright eyed and bushy tailed on Zoom at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes. One other important clarification for interested parties. Actually, this is the part I meant to flag. It's more important. The if you guys uh, are interested, you can hang out. There should and, not be language listen. regarding the the commission developing a consumer owned quasi municipal corporation in this. And I think that, again, that was my, um, it's probably the older draft I was working off of. Um, page eight at the top, that language should not be in there. So just a, and, I, I, yeah. and just another Thank point you. of clarification, if I may, if, if the two versions, the pink, yeah, I just and the lime aren't going out, and the or the green should not go out either because they've none of them been yeah. right. Okay, let, let's clarify that. So you do not want me to distribute. The, well, we only got halfway through it. Okay, so I'm not distributing the lime. Well, at this point, it's. I mean, if it's been provided to the committee, I believe at that point it is technically public. Okay. Um, All right. But I think perhaps with the understanding that this has not been, it's not Finalized. final because the committee has not signed, or the right. report group has not signed off on it. It's not signed off on. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Jason. It's so nice to be with you guys in person. <laughs>